In our study of Isaiah chapter 44, we look at the futility of idolatry and the redemption of Israel. Now listen, Yaakov my servant, Israel whom I have chosen, thus says Adonai, who made you, formed you in the womb, and will help you, don't be afraid, Yaakov my servant, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground, I will pour my spirit on your descendants, my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows on the river banks. One will say, I belong to Adonai. Another will be called by the name of Yaakov. Yet another will write that he belongs to Adonai. And adopt the surname Israel. This passage speaks again of the fact that God has chosen Israel for a specific purpose and, although many have been in rebellion and rejected the gospel, that purpose has not changed. Here, God says that at some point the people of Israel will receive the Spirit and that will cause them to sprout and grow like a willow tree along a river bank. They will grow and accept the calling to be a light unto the nations. Thus says Adonai, Israel's King and Redeemer, Adonai Tzvaoti. I am the first, and I am the last, besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him speak out. Let him show me clearly what has been happening since I set up the eternal people, let him foretell future signs and events. Don't be frightened, don't be afraid, didn't I tell you this long ago? I foretold it, and you are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock, I know of none. Once again, God points out the fact that he is unique in the power of his words as what he speaks comes into existence. He reminds the people of Israel that he has made a covenant with them to be a kingdom people and that in the future they will be his witnesses. God said this long ago and repeats it once again here as assurance that his plan has not changed. All idol makers amount to nothing, their precious productions profit no one, and their witnesses, to their own shame, neither see nor understand. Who would fashion a god or cast an image that profits no one anything? All involved will be ashamed, but more than anyone else, the people who made them. Let them all be assembled, let them stand up, let them fear and be shamed together. Once again, God explains the fact that idols and those that make them are nothing. Those that make and trust in idols will be judged and put to shame. A blacksmith makes a tool over burning coals, with his strong arm he shapes it with hammers. But when he gets hungry, his strength fails, if he doesn't drink water, he grows tired. A carpenter takes his measurements, sketches the shape with a stylus, planes the wood, checks it with calipers, and carves it into the shape of a man, and, since it is honored like a man, of course it has to live in a house. He goes to chop down cedars, he takes an evergreen and an oak, he especially tends one tree in the forest, plants a pine for the rain to nourish. In time, when it's ready for use as fuel, he takes some of it to keep himself warm and burns some more to bake bread. Then he makes a god and worships it, carves it into an idol and falls down before it. So half of it he burns in the fire, with that half he roasts meat and eats his fill, he warms himself, says, it feels so good, getting warm while watching the flames. With the rest of the log he fashions a god, a carved image, then falls down before it, he worships it and prays to it. Save me, he says, for you are my god. We see examples of how ridiculous idolatry really is as those who create the idols are only able to do so because of the resources that God has created. Such people know nothing, understand nothing. Their eyes are sealed shut, so that they can't see, their hearts too, so they can't understand. Not one thinks to himself or has the knowledge or the discernment to say, I burned half of it in the fire, baked bread on its coals, roasted meat and ate it. Should I now make the rest an abomination? Should I prostrate myself to a tree trunk? He is relying on ashes. A deceived heart has led him astray, so that now he won't save himself, just won't say, this thing in my hand is a fraud. Here, we see that those who make idols for themselves are so deceived by their own desires that they do not have the capacity to repent. Keep these matters in mind, Yaakov, for you, Israel, are my servant. I formed you, you are my own servant, Israel, don't forget me. Like a thick cloud, I wipe away your offenses, like a cloud, your sins. Come back to me, for I have redeemed you. This passage calls Israel to remember the futility of idolatry and also assures them that God will remember his covenant with them. God then reminds Israel of the fact that he has redeemed them from their sins. Sing, you heavens, for Adonai has done it. Shout, you depths of the earth. Mountains, break out into song, along with every tree in the forest. For Adonai has redeemed Yaakov, he glorifies himself in Israel. Because of this redemption, 
all of creation rejoices as it will also be released from the curse of sin and death. Here is what Adonai says, your Redeemer, he who formed you in the womb, I am Adonai, who makes all things, who stretched out the heavens all alone, who spread out the earth all by myself. I frustrate false prophets and their omens, I make fools of diviners, I drive back the sages and make their wisdom look silly. I confirm my servants' prophecies and make my messengers' plans succeed. I say of Yerushalayim, she will be lived in, of the cities of Yudah, they will be rebuilt, I will restore their ruins. I say to the deep sea, dry up. I will make your streams run dry. I say of Koresh, he is my shepherd, he will do everything I want. He will say of Yerushalayim, you will be rebuilt, and of the temple, your foundation will be laid. In the end, the wisdom of man is shown to be worthless as what God says will happen comes into being. We hope you've enjoyed this study and we uh, hope that if you'd like more information about any of our studies, you go to our website at mychristianspace.com and we hope to see you back here again. For now, that's all from the Olive Grove.